Hello friends, we are starting a new lecture series on the topic electricity and electronics. In this lecture series, this is the first video. So today we will see some of the basic aspects of electricity, particularly we'll, we will slowly construct what is uh, charge, what is the meaning of it, Coulomb's law, electric field, electric flux. You will see some basic ideas of these things alone in this video. Here, title reads electricity and electronics. We should understand what is electricity and electronics. There are two terms. One is electricity. Other term is electronics. What does it mean? See, we are having different types of materials like metals, table like wooden things, silica like other materials, sand like materials. So I have given three different examples. So these are the materials, solid materials. And we know that either metals or wooden things or silica or sand, all these are of made up of atoms. So all are made up of atoms. So if you look into it, atom has a central nucleus and which contains neutron and proton. Both are present in the central nucleus and there are circular paths according to classical theory. There are circular paths in which electrons are revolving around this nucleus. You can say like this. Okay. So, this revolving electrons is filled in different orbitals in a particular manner. You can say that it is filled with the formula 2m square equal to equal. Fine. Now the point is, this outermost There is an outermost orbit where the orbit may be filled or unfilled. You know, each electron is having a binding force with nucleus. So, each electron in different orbits are binded with the nucleus. So, this binding force will be weaker when you go out from the nucleus. That is the force between these two nucleus and the inner orbit is higher when compared with the force between the nuclear and outer orbit. So in the outermost orbit that is called the valence orbit where there are electrons. Now that electrons having the weak bond with the nucleus. Now depending upon the atom this when you consider metals or wooden things or silica, due to this outermost electrons, the property will be very. One considered material may have excessive free electrons in its outermost orbit or it may have you no know, completely filled state or it have very few electrons that are free or you can say that no free electrons at zero state zero temperature 
no free electron at zero kelvin but there are some electrons at higher temperatures so based on this electron availability in a material you can classify a material into conductor insulator and semiconductor so conductor is a material like metals human body etc it has more number of free electrons to move within that so that an electron will move one point to other point if you are having a metal rod say this is a metal rod an electron can move from point a to point b free in that case it is said to be conductor and some materials like rubber glass rod these are the things wooden table these are the things where there is no free electrons to move from one point to other point so that they are termed as insulators metals are conductors wooden things are insulators and there are third category where uh, the electronic state is filled and there is no free electrons if it is at zero kelvin but if you supply some heat which means some external force some energy in in the form of heat in the form of phonons you can say technically it will excite some of the electrons from its outermost orbit to the free electrons so that it will behave like a conductor it's a partial conductor so you can call it a semiconductor so it is called silica and if you have you know listen be carefully these classifications are made with the movement of electrons whether the electrons are available to move or not now here the electricity that can be defined as it is a branch of physics that deals with electrons or in general you can say that deals with charge see here what is electron you know in an atom electron is assumed to be negative when we are talking about electron it is said to be negative if you are talking about proton it is said to be positive okay right fine here all these electron electrons has a property it's like you see as like you know if you are having a water okay right? assume that in an analogy assume that there is a dub which contains water right now we can say that for a water we can say potential energy kinetic energy like things when a water this water tank is moved upward from a ground level then you can talk about the potential energy when the water is flowing from one portion to other point one point to other point suppose we are connecting with a tube and it is flowing from this point to another dub in the bottom if the water flows here then we will talk about the kinetic energy right similarly if we talk about an electron right it has a charge we we will say a property called charge 
charge is a property of electron you can say it's a property of electron you can express in terms of proton as well now electricity is a branch that deals the charge and its characteristics see as we said charge is a property now we study this property under various situations various situations what are the situations situations where this charge is under rest always when the charge is stationary when the charge is stationary or when the charge is moving or when the charge is moving and a charge is under certain circumstances certain situations for example whether the charge is under a spherical you know conditions there are certain situations we will discuss later so broadly if the charge is stationary that is if you are considering a charge which is not moving at all it is remain rest in a position where it started right so that is called if you study such cases then you can say that electricity in that you have a specific branch electro statics electrostatics is a sub branch of electricity that deals with the charges of stationary state or rest state always another case suppose if the charge is moving in that case we can say that electrodynamics or current electricity this deals with the properties of charges under moving condition properties of charges under moving condition well so in the nutshell what is electricity Electri electricity is the study of charges under two cases in a broad sense when the charge is at rest or when the charge is at moving okay that is for our electricity but then what about electronics here also we will study the property of charge property of charges but within different electronic components different electronic components for example we are having transistor we are having fit we are having operational amplifiers we are having diodes light emitting diode genar diode there are different types of circuits we have an inverting amplifier non inverting amplifier and there are a lot of circuits which we can construct using the composition of uh, circuits so uh, you know charge flowing through a capacitor charge flowing through an inductor all these things if you study the property of charges right and within the different electronic components and how these components are behaving if you apply charge into it so these are the things that comes in electronics generally electronics is a branch which studies the charges and the components which deals this which deals these charges so this is what the title now we are going to see some theories related with electricity and some of the aspects related to electronics basically this course is for uh, an ancillary physics level of chemistry and math students of undergraduate programs so in that level only we are going to cover so what is charge charge is a 
property it can be said to be positive or negative charge can be positive charge can be negative assume that it is a point charge let us say this is a point charge if it is positive then this charge right assume that if it is a point charge it has some property here say for example this will exert a force it will exert a force if it is a positive then this line of forces pointing outward from the point charge suppose if this point charge is a negative then this line of forces will pointing towards the it pointing towards the charge so this is the reason charge that exerts force always and this force lines are going outward when it is a positive charge going inward when it is a negative charge negative charge so here it is the lines are outward here the lines are inward due to this right and the force lines are going outward it is called positive charge and the force lines are going inward it is called negative charge due to this you can say that the properties of charges as you can define the properties of charges as point number one like charges ripple it's like see i am pulling outward and another person he is also pulling outward so if we both pull outward what will happen we cannot pull further right so we will went back right if we, if two forces are pulled then what happens it will ripple back in that way if you bring an another positive charge close to a positive charge which is already present here what will happen this exerts an outward force this will also exert an outward force so that it will it will be pulled out it will be rippled out so that when it comes towards this both cannot attract each other both cannot mingle with each other rather it will go away that is like charges ripple this is true for negative charge as well this is true for negative charge as well okay because this force lines will go into this this force lines will go into this this both cannot be put together so like charges will ripple and unlike charges unlike charges positive negative will attract unlike charges will attract another thing the force lines line of forces are uniform in all directions see it is the line of forces it acts on all directions all three directions if you consider the cartesian coordinates the line of forces are uniform in all directions so this is about charge fine now assume that we have a point charge here let us say q1 we have another point charge here let us say q2 according to the properties of charges like charges ripple unlike charges attract assume that we don't know whether these two are like charges or unlike charges whether it is positive charge or negative charge or one positive one negative that we don't know right but and the distance between them is r but it will 
exert a line of force either outward or inward so this will also exert a line of force outward or inward now we can write the force between these two charges that we can write the force is directly proportional to the charge q the force between these two charges is depending upon the charge of q1 and it is also directly proportional to the charge of q2 and it is inversely proportional to the distance between them collectively you can say that f is proportional to q1 and q2 inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them okay and this proportionality constant is replaced with 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r square and this was discovered by Coulomb so that it is called Coulomb's law. So according to Coulomb, if you place two point charges whose charge, whether it is positive, negative is unknown, irrespective of charges, if you place two charges in a distance r from each other, then the force acting between these two charges can be written as f is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r square where q1 is the charge of this point charge q2 is the charge of another point charge and r is the distance separating between these two charges here this term epsilon naught it is called permittivity of free space what do you mean by permittivity the ability of the medium to allow the to allow the electric fields into it electric fields into it this epsilon tells us the ability of the particular medium how 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 capable it to allow electric field into it that is permittivity if you put zero then it is the epsilon naught it is the permittivity of free space and you can put this epsilon with one another suffix for different mediums the permittivity of the air is more or less close to free space whereas the permittivity of other materials like water or metals are like that you can the permittivity will vary for different mediums right here the permittivity of the free space can be written as 8.854 the epsilon naught which is equal to 8.854 1 8 into 10 power minus 12 coulomb square newtons coulomb square per newton meter square or you can say that the unit will be fermi per meter the unit will be Fermi per meter. See, for this case, now we have proportionality constant 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. If you substitute epsilon naught here, 1, 1 by 4 into 3.142 into 8.854 18 into 10 power 
minus 12 if you evaluate this this will yield you 9 into 10 power 9 and this is the constant right it is proportionality constant it does not have any unit it is the constant okay fine assume that suppose we are having the charge 1 and this charge is also 1 both are same which is separated by 1 unit distance r is equal to 1 in that case r square equal to 1 if two light charges either positive positive or negative negative two light charges are placed with an unit distance then what will happen to the force the force becomes 9 into 10 power 9 q1 becomes 1 q2 becomes 1 distance is 1 so that 1 square 1 it becomes force becomes 9 into 10 power 9 the unit for force is u10 okay it's a one simple trivial case but from this example we can define Coulomb. We can define Coulomb. Coulomb is the unit of the charge. He said charge is the property and it has a unit which is called Coulomb. So, charge, it is the unit, Coulomb, it is denoted by capital C. C, Coulomb can be defined as, one Coulomb is defined as, suppose, if there are two light charges q1 q2 which is placed with a unit distance r then if the if the force between these two charges is equal to 9 into 10 power 9 newton then these two particles having the charges of 1 coulomb right how it is defined we created a situation what is that we have a light charges equal charges placed with the distance r that is placed with the distance r which is unit distance if these two charges placed with the unit distance now if the force between these two charges is 9 into 10 power 9 newton then the charge it was unknown right this charge now we can say that each having one coulomb of charge so this is one definition of coulomb under the case of electrostatics suppose in the case of electrodynamics definition in electrodynamic case assume that this is a wire in this wire current is flowing that is electrons are moving from one side to other side now one coulomb is defined as if one ampere of current is flowing into the wire for one second then it is called one coulomb right so coulomb which is equal to ampere per second if the electrons are moving in that case electrodynamic definitions are coming right now assume that in this place now we have been telling that point charge point charge point charge but what is there in that we didn't mention so far 
assume that in this place there is an electron now what would be the charge the charge of electron is equal to 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb this is the charge of electron okay and if you want what is 1 coulomb if you want 1 coulomb you bring right you can rewrite this fine suppose if you write you know one coulomb of charges which is equal to 6.241 into 10 power 18 protons okay suppose if you are uh, considering protons then if you sum up the charges of 6.241 into 10 power 18 protons that will constitute 1 coulomb of charge so this is coulomb and here let's move to the definition for electric field and before understanding what is electric field let me come with an analogy assume that here we are using some wood, wood materials and fire it up so there is a fire created here right suppose if a person from infinite distance moving towards this way when this person moves towards fire when he is going towards it he experiences some hotness right fire is you know exists only here so this fire it is blowing here but in this area nothing in it but if you are going towards that you can experience a hotness the hot temperature you can feel right even though nothing in it which means this fire that exerts heat in the surrounding which felt up to certain close proximity at a larger distance here the hotness will be less here the hotness will be higher when you go from an infinite distance towards the fire the hotness will increase gradually when you go very close you can feel the unbearable hot unbearable high temperature right this is the case we all might have witnessed everyone might have witnessed at one point this situation the, assume a similar situation if there is a charge right if you bring another charge from infinite distance towards this charge we already told that this charge exert some force okay it exert some force now this force cannot be realized when this charge when the moving charge is somewhere at very large distance but when it is moving close to it it will experience that force right assume that there is a proximity within which the force is experienced that that area in that area we can define it as field right this electric field is an area within which the force exerted by this stationary charge is experienced by the moving charge right now how to define that electric field is denoted by e okay now this e is denoted by e is equal to f by q where f is the force exerted by this stationary charge let's say this is q naught for understanding and moving charge is q 
Now you can say that electric field E as force by Q. These are the electro quantity actually. Field is direction oriented. Why? Because when you going towards the field, and when you going towards the stationary charge, the field will be maximum. When you going away from the stationary charge, the field will be slowly decreasing. The field will decrease. So it's a vector. Now, what is the formula for force? Right? See, in previously, the force between uh, two charges are the force experienced by the charge that we have written as using Coulomb's law F vector which is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 by Q2 by R square apply here here this interacting two forces are one force is Q naught other force is Q in that case if you substitute the formula for F we can write 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by sorry q0 q by r square divided by q so this and this will goes out so that now electric field e which is nothing but q0 by r square what this formula tells us now this field E will depending upon the charge Q0. If the charge of this stationary charge is high, then the field will be high. And this field will decrease when you increase the distance. Right? Suppose if I am measuring the field at this point, this is R1. And another case if I am measuring the field at this point R2. What would be the field at this point? The field E1 at the distance R1 from the point charge is higher when compared with the field E2 which is measured at the distance R2 from the point charge. Why? Because the field is square of the inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the charge to the point where it is measured. So, field will be higher, no, the field is increasing when you increase uh, the charge of the stationary charge and if the point at which the field is measured, in that case the field will be decreasing if you increasing the distance. This decrease will be in terms of square of the distance between that. So this is how we can understand the electric field. So electric field is nothing but the force acting on a moving charge. A force, a force acting on a moving charge. But now we can define the unit for electric field. Unit for electric field is for charge it is coulomb. The distance square that is you can say meter square so that coulomb per meter square you can say or in simple words you can write the unit for force is newton for charge it is coulomb so you can write newton per coulomb it has another unit as well volt per meter so there are two units newton per coulomb or volt per meter but you have now electric field due to a point charge see assume that the entire thing is happens in that term. we create a situation where there is a point O and another point P. At point O, there is a charge Q. It's positive charge, assume that. At point B, we place a test charge. So this is a test charge. We are placing. Now, the distance between these 
two points OP is R. The everything is at Hecker. Under this condition, what would be the electric field E at this point due to this charge plus Q when a test charge Q not placed here? This is the question. This is nothing but if you write the equation for force according to Coulomb's law, you can write 1 by 4 by epsilon naught Q Q naught by R square. Now, as per the definition, the electric field is nothing but force per charge. Here the charge means you have to apply the test charge. So it is Q naught. Now, this equation becomes 1 by 4 by epsilon naught Q by R square. So this is the electric field E at this point due to this charge Q when the test charge Q naught is present at this point. Okay? Fine. Now, here, if this charge is positive, then the line will be going towards outward direction. The charge is negative, then it will be on, in the direction will be inward. That is the thing. So that electric field E due to a point charge Q not placed here, test charge placed here and another charge is placed here. Because of this charge, when a Q naught is present here, an electric field experience at this point can be written with this equation. Flux of the electric field. Let us consider another situation. See, there is a situation where we have electric field lines. Electric field lines may not be uniform if the charges are in this side and if this is the positive charge so that the lines will moving outwards. Assume that such non-uniform electric field non-uniform E say there is a field where non-uniform. Now, you consider a plane, right? You can consider a plane along these force lines or you can consider a plane perpendicular to these electric field lines or you can consider a force line which is inclined. We have considered one such inclined plane. Assume that this so in this case, this force line penetrate this plane, that is electric field line penetrates at this point, right? Now, see one line is penetrating here, there is another line which is penetrating from here, there is another line which is penetrating from here, there is another line which is penetrating. So likewise, there are n number of lines coming out of this considered plane. Now you can define flux is number of electric field lines passing through a given surface. Passing through a given surface. Now how to write the expression? Let us consider this line for convenience and let us divide the surface into infinitely small squares. Now consider this square, right? So there is a square that we have considered. Within this square, let us assume the electric field is uniform because this is an infinitely small square. So we have considered an infinitely small square within that the electric field is 
the electric field is uniform. Now, see, so this is an inclined plane and it's a small square in that. So this is the direction of E. E vector and this is nothing but normal that is perpendicular line from this plane. It is the perpendicular line from this plane. That is the electric field lines are going and the plane is putting like that. If you draw a line from this, it will go like this. So this field line is here and it is going like this. There, is, there will be an angle between this that you can write theta. That you can write theta. Fine. Now, if you straighten this, if you straighten this, you can draw the square like this. So this you can name it as ds. In that case, this become ds and this line become e. If I straighten this, okay, and this is theta. Right now we can write the flux phi at this point. The flux phi at this point is equal to this all our vectors. So E vector in here this ds is nothing but the area component, small area component of this small square. So dx ds right. The entire area of the surface you can write S, within this, this is the small area and the component ds is the a component which is normal to this small area, okay, fine. Now if you remove this vector, you can take a triangle, trigonometry for your hill, so this is hypotenuse and this is adjacent side and this is opposite side and what is that theta is between adjacent side to hypotenuse so that you can write adjacent side by hypotenuse which is equal to cos theta so you can write phi which is equal to e ds cos theta Okay, now you can define this as d phi. Why? Because we are considering flex for this small square, but we have uh, n number of such squares. So this is d phi. C. Now, if theta equal to zero, d phi becomes e d s. Suppose if theta equal to pi by two, what will happen? d5 becomes 0 and if theta is equal to uh, theta greater than pi by 2 d5 becomes less than yeah, less than 0 if theta equal to theta less than pi by 2 d5 greater than 0 but less than 1 Okay, greater than 0 but less than 1. What does it mean? When this plane is along the along the electric field line, then you can define d phi is nothing but the field multiplied by the component. If it is perpendicular, right? In that case, if the pi by 2 is perpendicular, when will be perpendicular? When C, when it is perpendicular actually? See here, if the lines are going like this, and if you are putting the plane like this, and the normal will be perpendicular. Right? In that case, no line will penetrate through this plane. The line will be flow on the plane but not it, it will not penetrate right so in that case what will happen if the theta is pi by 2 that is this line 
and the normal component has 90 degree then flux flux is nothing but the number of lines passing through it will be zero right if you put like this so this is the direction of the electric field and this is the direct uh, direction of the normal component it is 90 degree then no line will be pass penetrate through this plane that is the case for this and when this angle between this is zero that is if you put the plane perpendicular to it now this is the direction of the e that is electric field lines e and the normal component also will pass you know in the same direction this is the normal component of this plane both are in same direction so theta will be zero in that case all the lines will pass through so where we have the product of ens this case and for other cases for the inclined positions we have the cases like this now but d5 is for only this small square if you want the number of flux lines through the entire plane that we have considered in that case you have to integrate this d5 for the entire sphere entire seat in that case this is e ds cos theta e ds integral of e ds here close integral is for the entire case that is if this is a seat plane then you can put integral suppose instead of a seat if you have considered a sphere that is for example this is a electric field line in that you have considered a sphere within this there is a sphere and in that sphere if you consider one you know this, this is a sphere so in this if you consider only a small area now if you want to extend the electric field line for the entire sphere sphere is a closed environment in that case you have to write closed integral when you consider sphere in the place of in the place of a plane if you consider here, sphere in the place of plane you have to put a closed integral circle represents the closed integral right now what is the unit for that unit for e unit for e is nothing but force per charge newton per coulomb and now for surface component area component it is meter square so that newton meter square by coulomb the unit will be newton meter square by coulomb that is what you can write or earlier for e we can write volt per meter now if you rewrite this for here volt per meter into meter square it will be volt per meter the flux the electric flux the unit of the electric flux will be newton meter square by coulomb or volt meter you can write so in an axle what is flux flux is the number of electric field lines passing through a given surface how did you arrive this see we have considered electric field lines in a plane where we have considered another plane that is inclined and we have defined divided into n number of small squares this entire field is non uniform electric field within this small square we assume that it is a uniform electric field we have written an electric field component in this direction a normal component to this square is ds that is area component the angle between that is theta with the help of trigonometry we can write d5 right with the help of d5 we can write e ds cos theta and from that we have inferred that when uh, this electric field lines when we consider the plane if the plane is along the direction of the line then there is no field will pass through it if it is if it is perpendicular to it then maximum number of field will passing through it the the flux is high and if you have an inclined positions then we have the conditions we have the statements and as we have calculated the expression for a small square and we have integrated for the entire uh, plane we will get the total number of fluxes if it is a closed surface we have to take 
closed integral surface uh, closed integral over the open integral this is the case so in this class we have talked about what is electricity and what is electronics what is charge coulomb's law electric field and flux of the electric field these are the topics that we have covered in the level of ancillary physics fine let us continue in the next class thank you bye bye